Good. Right. Welcome, everyone. This is joint rules taking place on Tuesday, December 28th. We have one agenda item for today's meeting, which we have been talking about, and we talked about at the last meeting that it's our goal here to check in before we come back next week. Um, and to reassess if we continue on our journey on plan A or is it time to visit plan B. We've all been closely monitoring Omicron variant and have seen the news and heard the um, information from the CDC and other sources about the timing of the surge and when it comes. And unfortunately, um, a lot of this is happening right as we're bringing everyone back to the building. And so I think it makes sense for us to regroup and have a conversation about um, whether it's time to, to, um, to, to move to a plan B. So with that, I apologize for the delay in getting us started today. And just a reminder to everyone in the room to wear your mask and make sure it's covering your nose and your mouth. So I open it up to members. I know we've been talking a lot with caucuses, our caucuses and would love to hear what the feedback you've been hearing. Uh, Representative Long and then Senator Clarkson. Thank you. Um, we, we have been talking to our members and caucuses and, and, and for all the reasons that you just stated, uh, Speaker Kwinski, and um, for the feedback that we've been getting, I, I do think as I would prefer to see us be able to just step back into this building in a normal way immediately. Um, but given the circumstances on the ground today with this current surge that is going on, I, I think it might make sense for us to give ourselves um, a two weeks to go remote and to be able to reassess in that two weeks um, coming back and how, how we come back. Because I do think that this is a really fluid situation and things change honestly, not just by the day, but honestly by the hour. And uh, things may look very different next week. Senator Clarkson. Well, Senate rules has met. And as you know, Senate rules is very much supportive of that, of beginning remotely. We enabled ourselves the opportunity to begin the session remotely. So we will have our first uh, day on Tuesday working remotely and will be passing resolutions to this effect. So we uh, also support uh, beginning with the freight train of Omicron coming at us and with the ho expected holiday surge when Michael Pichek tells us we may expect a thousand cases a day. I think that uh, one of our uh, responsibilities is quite frankly to meet in a healthy and safe way and not subject our members to anything that would put their health or the public's health who are coming to be our witnesses at risk. And uh, I think until we get through this freight train of Omicron coming at us, uh, this is a, a hard truth that we, will, we should probably meet remotely. Uh, we in the Senate will probably be reconsidering this a, a little later, but probably at the end of January. But I think we all can reconsider in two weeks. And, uh, but I, we are absolutely on board with that plan. Senator Brock and then Senator Mazza. Uh, clearly we wanna do what makes sense and certainly what makes sense from a health standpoint. Uh, the notion uh, given where we are with Omicron of uh, having the ability uh, to meet remotely for a very limited period of time with very close check-in points and check-in dates I think is critical. Uh, I think, though, that uh, if we do additionally uh, do decide to do something like that, of course, it obviously each individual chamber will make their own decisions, but as joint rules recommendations, I think it's important that we ensure that we have, if we're using trigger points of some kind to decide what we do, that we have some scientific or medical or public health basis for doing so, rather than our gut opinion or feeling of what the right numbers ought to be and that we ought to have a mechanism and it may well be through joint rules that we get uh, an, a, a protocol established with that kind of input 
testimonial if necessary uh, between now and uh, as soon as possible to do so. And I think we all ought to commit though that our goal in all of this is to be here in person doing the people's business in the way that it should be done, but at the same time, not do things that perhaps jeopardize the health of not only ourselves, but those of us who are with us. If you were to lose weight, sorry. Sorry, continue. I, I think that's no, no. I think that's it in, in, in a nutshell. I think we can absolutely. I think it's going to be critical given the evolving situation that we, you know, we meet. Um, you know, we'll need to figure out a schedule, but I think you're right. We're going to have to be meeting on a regular basis to ensure that we're following the most up-to-date information and getting more support and expertise from public health experts about the best way for us to come back because we're different. We have people coming in from all corners of the state, different people, different days. We have a old HVAC system that's going to take years to repair. Um, there's just all these other factors that, you know, we just need something that suits um, the needs of this building. Uh, Representative McCoy and then Senator Clark. Did Mazza? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Senator Mazza. That's right. Uh, we had talked in the Senate rules. Would it be for those who have to travel and stay in Montpelier, would it be better to uh, go a month and then make a decision or just two weeks? Because uh, we had talked about a month for people who have to make decisions whether to stay here and stay in Montpelier. Uh, and then we would decide at the end of January, but is that too soon, too late, or? <clears throat> I don't want to speak for Senator Cicero, but I, do you want me to jump in? I mean, I think Senator Mazza, I'll start, and then if others want to jump in. I think after evolving conversations, what we're all concerned about is what is, what is, for, what is the trigger? What is the mechanism right. based on public health data and guidance that says it's safe for us? And so instead of tying it to a certain date, we're saying we know two weeks makes sense in terms of spread and mitigation. And in that time, we work together to figure out what that combination of numbers is to help us know um, when to make that call to go back remote if needed. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yep, um, I'm gonna, I saw Representative McCoy yep. and then we'll. So, you know, I, it, it's, it, it's difficult for me to acquiesce to the two, two weeks. I mean, that's what I'm acquiescing to as we come back on January 18th. With the caveat that if the numbers are so off the charts within those two weeks, having in mind what we've heard is the Omicron has, you know, the, we haven't seen the, the peak of it yet. So that's why I am agreeing to January 8th as our start date, having in mind we, we need to have what we should be working for and looking at is what is the trigger that triggers us not to come back as opposed to we're back mm -hmm. January 18th, except for whatever we, you know, the scientists and doctors feel we should be using as a trigger mm -hmm. to get us to come back. Because, you know, as I told you many times, um, Speaker, everybody, you know, everybody's back. We've had school children back since last year. We've had, you know, we've had uh, factory workers going back. We've got Walmart employees that never left their jobs. So for us to hold ourselves to some different standard, having in mind, you know, we're a little bit different in that we have the public coming in from all walks of the state of Vermont that may change a little bit what we do, but we've made this building as safe as we, as we could possibly make this building. We have mask mandates in place. We're strongly suggesting every legislator get rapid tested on Monday and Tuesday. If you are not vaccinated, then you take a PCR test on Wednesdays of every week. Social distancing, you know, changing cafeteria times so that we don't have as many people in the cafeteria, shorten committee time so you can go outside. And I mean, that just doesn't happen in other jobs. You're standing at your register for four hours and then you get a 15 minute break. With Lord knows who comes through your your checkout line. 
So I will acquiesce to the January 18th with the caveat that we, we hear from medical professionals and scientists to tell us, yes, you know, this is the trigger and we have not met that trigger. So mm -hmm. you can go back because we've heard from Dr. Leahy, the state epidemiologist from UVM Medical Center who said, I, I made the comment where Representative McCarthy sat and he said, there's little to no chance of COVID spreading. Then Representative Long, who's sitting right next to McCarthy, made the same comment. He said, once again, if you're fully masked, there is little to no spread. So I just wanna make that absolutely clear that my goal is we are back in this house doing the people's work in the people's house on January 18th. All right, so I saw a couple hands, so I'll go to Senator Clarkson and Senator Brock and then Representative Long. Uh, I think that is a, a goal we all hold dear, Patty. I uh, also think that we are in at the, uh, about to hit a peak of a whole new uh, piece of this COVID epidemic and that we need to be able to respond uh, in thoughtful and uh, safe and healthy ways. And only a fool doesn't change their mind. And with all the information we now have on what's about to hit us, I think we would be uh, foolish to place our public and our legislators and our staff at that risk. Uh, I also would like to have us look at the holiday guidance that was put on the Vermont Department of Health website. And they say that, you know, in addition to all the things we know, get vaxxed, get boosted, stay masked. They say, keep it small. This is not keeping it small by our gathering here. Even with the public, which has had the most incredible access, they have the unprecedented access to our work that they've ever had in the history of Vermont. Um, which will continue happily. But the even so, we are about 300 people working in this building. And so keep that is not keeping it small. That is not abiding by their holiday guidelines. So for me, it's just uh, as important to, you know, we're, we're, our responsibility is to protect ourselves and protect our public. And quite honestly, a lot of the world is responding and closing back down. A lot of companies are going back remote. Broadway has shut down. And, you know, Broadway, you know, is a great indicator for indoor, indoor spaces. And they uh, are pretty much all shutting down again. So there are responses to what's happening in this moment with COVID. All right. Senator Brock and then Representative Long. This is, this is a, a more mundane, uh, practical uh, a comment related to what Senator Mazza had mentioned is we do have a number of members who make long-term commitments or medium-term commitments for lodging in Montpelier. Uh, he was looking for a month for that reason. I think whatever we ultimately decide, whether it's two weeks or a month or whatever, that we should take into account those commitments that members have made and look at the extent to which we can provide some relief to those who've committed because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, that is something that we agree, we agree on and we'll set up like we have in the past. Right. Sure. The second thing uh, in terms of the triggers that we're looking at, we've talked about things like hospitalization. Uh, we may look at a secondary trigger of something like death rate uh, 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 on a weekly basis to go forward. One of the things we also ought to think about is the exposure rate or case rate within this building. Uh, if we find, for example, that this is a super spreader, uh, that should be a trigger as well. <clears throat> so we should add that. But again, the key is getting some competent medical advice as well as right. advice from our public health authorities as to what is the right thing and what is the sensible thing from a scientific basis for us to do. Right, here, here. Thank you. So, so that's a great segue to what I was going to say, which was very simply, Dr. Leahy, as you mentioned, um, Representative McCoy, Dr. Leahy was, he did make those statements about us sitting near each other and could be sick with us, but he also said um, Omicron could change the, the scenario. So I would just say that, you know, I, I agree. We, we should be looking at it from the situation we're in in the moment. And uh, that's why I still suggest that two weeks is a good one for us to reassess. 
Go ahead, Cindy. So I just want to bring something into the conversation that we, we haven't talked about um, in relationship to why it's so important for us also on the Senate side to keep our infection rates low. We don't have a lot of wiggle room if we have people who get sick. We, we lose quorum so easily in committee. Yeah. And so it is a different calculation for us. And so I just want to bring that here. If we lose one or two people in committee, and then you've got somebody who isn't able to be there, you know, we can't vote on anything. The most important thing for us, from where I sit, is to make sure that the people's work continues. We have hundreds of millions of dollars to get out the door to support Vermont families. And we did not shirk that duty last year when we had to go remote. We're not going to do that this year. I know the speaker and I are completely committed to making sure that nothing is going to interrupt the important work that we do. So I just want to make that explicit and just explain why we may feel a little bit differently about how an infection could completely cripple our ability to do the work. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good point. All right. So what I'm hearing around the table is two weeks remote in that time, joint rules um, meets remotely to review with public health experts what a trigger is for us to come back that's safe. Okay. Can I have someone make that motion? I'm happy to make that motion. Thank you. I do. All right. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Without clarity in terms of the motion, you've moved that we, in fact, uh, meet remotely for two weeks. And then, but at some point, there needs to be a decision made as to whether that continues in the event that no decision is made, then we come back. Is that your understanding of that motion? Right, right. And again, just to remind people about the process. So joint rules vote on a recommendation for both House and Senate rules. Um, to yeah. review and to act on. Right, because Senate rules may, we make, right. we make a difference. Yeah. Yep. Any further discussion? All right. Senator Ballant? Yes. Senator Clarkson? Yes. Senator Brock? Yes. Oz is absent. Representative Long? Yes. Representative McCarthy? Yes. Representative McCoy? Yes. And I am a yes, so that is 701 motion carries. Thank you. So um, I realize that there are other meetings um, upcoming that folks have to go to. And I, again, apologize for the delay today. Uh, so what I think what we'll do is we will regroup to get a meeting on the books to and get some folks lined up to testify to help us uh, continue this conversation. And um, there are also some other decisions that we still need to revisit at some point um, that we can send out to you. But today's focus was just really limited to um, how we return. So, so yeah, just a point of clarification. Yeah. So since this motion passed, yeah. the next meeting of joint rules will be held remotely. That's yes. right. Pending both House and Senate rules vote. Okay. Yes. All right, so with that, please stay tuned um, to get a meeting on the books ASAP and, uh, and we'll review some other um, issues that are coming up just as how we address um, the building and whatnot. So with that, if, unless there's any other business.